You're watching Forget Being Cool. Arbor Day, the movie. What happens yeah. in Arbor Day? Hi, Jeff. Hi, Dave. Hi, hi. we watched an impactful film. Did you know that? Uh, yes, I did. Jeff, how would you feel if you had to relive any day over and over and over and over and over again? I would hope it's the best day. Yeah? Do you think what, that, what? that reliving Groundhog Day would be the best day ever? I don't know. I don't remember what I did this Groundhog Day. I think it was just a normal day. <laughs> Let's see. Groundhog Day was Saturday. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't mind reliving Saturday over and over and over again. <laughs> Can you imagine reliving Saturday over and over and over again in 1993 where you didn't have any cell phones, any vi- any good video games, any any internet? Well, even Jeff, think you're here. Let's cuz I think this is more fun of the conversation. <laughs> cuz yeah. one, uh Groundhog Day is a great movie. There is yes. I have literally no complaints about this movie at all. Let me say this, Jeff. Imagine even if you had good video games, you couldn't save. Nothing nothing you could do. Nothing nothing ever, no matter how many times you tried, you couldn't save. Well, then you would better hope it's an online game, Battle Royale game. Did you see... We got to talk about this after the show. We got to talk about the new Battle Royale game. But anyway. So if you have those games, every game is different. Yeah, that would be fine. But yeah. you could never you could never invest yourself into anything with a story. Versus kind of the opposite of what this movie is. It's him investing everything he has into caring about everything that's happening that day. Right? Until mm-hmm. he nails it 100% perfectly to make it a day where not only did he do things to be selfish, right? To get what he wanted. He learned to have a day that was about being happy and doing the right thing. Yeah, but he didn't do things to get what he wanted. He just did things that that was nice and everything, and it got him what he wanted. So he didn't necessarily was selfish about it. Just he did everything to woo her over just by being the person he just figured he wanted to be. No, 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 no. He got to redo every mistake he made. He also purposely sat down and picked hit on Nancy. Nancy, not an important character, but he like got information about Nancy just so he could use it in his advantage the next day. Yeah, yeah, but but it showed when he tried to get the girl he wanted over and over and over again. If he tried too hard and tried to make it a perfect day with her and everything, he got slapped in the face. Right. No like, matter if he if he tried to get the girl, he wouldn't get the girl. He'd have to be get he had to get the girl by being entirely selfless. He has to do it honestly. Yeah, and it, it's a it's a it's a really kind of a sweet story. I, I've seen this movie before. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, and I and I always remembered it as a movie that I love, right? But like, I didn't realize how heartfelt that ending really is. Mm-hmm. Like, it really is about he finally had, like, he was happy. It was about happiness that turned him over. To the next day because he did the right things not because he did things for himself not because he was you know not because he was taking advantage of his situation to to get exactly what he wanted it was he he took the time to make sure that he did all the right things it was it was about everybody else it was when he was selfish it was selfless he cared about saving that kid and you know, mm-hmm. helping those old ladies with the car and the, you know, stopping the old guy from choking. Yeah. You know, I was reading stuff about this movie mm-hmm. or it just about the, I think it was based off of a, yes. a stage musical and in one in, in one version of this Groundhog's Day uh, right here it, um, for in order for Phil to understand how long he was in the, the, the in the time loop, he would read a word of a book every day in the library so he would know how long it's been. Oh, that's stressful. And if he and it turned like people speculate that he was stuck in that time loop. Uh the 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 whole span is ten thousand years. 
Oh my lord! Because think about everything he got good at in Groundhog's Day. You know, you know. I told Rachel. I said because she asked. She goes, "How many times do you think this is?" I asked Google, right, to determine that I didn't get an answer because he didn't answer. Anyway, um, and I'm like, "It's got to be years." And she's like, "It's not even a year." I'm like, "You don't think it took him more than 365 days to learn piano?" Like, like really? And it's it's this idea that. To learn everything. I mean, he knew every single piece of every situation that could occur in that town. So they, so somebody says it takes at least 10 years to get good at anything, like piano or anything. So to, and allotting for downtime and misguided years he spent, it had to be at least 30 or 40 years. Right? Can you imagine that? I, I mean, I, when we started watching, I go, this is, this is the nightmare. Right. Mm -hmm. Like this is the nightmare where you wake up and it's the same day and you say, you know, like hit me in the face. Mm -hmm. Right. Like wake me up and it doesn't work. And you end up realizing you have to do the same thing over and over and over. And it's it's awful. I mean, it really is a miserable existence if you think about it. Yeah. So you'd have to. He knew everything about every single person in that town. Right. Think about that. This, I, and you know what? You know what I like best about this movie? At the end, they don't explain why the time loop happened. They just don't explain it. No, there is no. Well, the time loop's over. You Boom. know, we, we started, I got up to get a drink right when the movie started because I'm like, I've seen this. It'll be fine. And I was like, so, like, did they go out into the blizzard and then, like, like did something weird happen? Like, I asked her, I like, come back. And I'm like, like they're frozen in, in the. Like in the blizzard, like they all died or something, right? And I'm, she's like, "No, I'm like, why do I remember this as a thing? There is no explanation. He's not dead. He's not, you know. There's yeah. there's nothing to it other than he needs to realize what it means to be happy. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. That's all it is. There's he was an awful person before this. Yeah, he was rude. He was mean." Nobody really liked him at work. Yeah, and like he was mean during the Groundhog's Day Festival. He just wanted to leave. And he was stuck one more day. And then over the course of however long it took him, he got good at at like a lot of things. He eventually started understanding what life was really like. And he started like taking life one day at a time. Especially the turning point was when he found the hobo. And the hobo died. Right. No, it is, it is yeah. seriously the turning point of the movie. But then after that, you can show he, his uptick where he just tries to save people. Yeah, you real, he realizes that even though he's reliving this moment every single day over and over and over and he can't die, the, yeah. the suicide attempts is miserable. Yeah. That is, so that, I think it's also like the five stages of grief. Right. Denial and isolation. Right. So the first time he just denies it and everything. Second one is just anger. Yeah. He's just angry. At everything that's like where he tries to just do everything he can because he was stuck in a time loop. Then bargaining. I think bargaining is like that right before he starts killing himself to where he just tries to like, oh, if I try and save this guy, maybe I'll get out of here. If like if I do this or if I do that. Right. And then depression is when he kills himself <laughs> all those times. You know he had to have killed himself more than those times. Oh, it's awful. It's awful to watch, too. And, and the acceptance is at the end where he just tries to get good at everything. He just tries. He accepts that he's stuck in his time loop. So he's just like, hey, I might as well just get good at stuff. So he gets good at ice sculpting. He gets good at the piano. He yeah. gets good at, like, everything. It's insane. Jeff, I love this movie. I absolutely love it. I I actually love this movie. It's it's one of my favorite movies. This yeah, there's there, like we we could get in here and critique and say like it's maybe not the prettiest movie of all time. Like I don't think it does anything to to groundbreak cinematography, but yet at the same time, it's really well done. Like it is, and then and then it makes you think like, man, this is this is crazy. What if I was in a time loop? Would I do this? What would I do? Right. Could you imagine? And then every step of the way, you're like, man. How long was he in this time loop 
to where he knew exactly like when he stole all that cash and bought everything mm -hmm. like how how long was he in that time loop for just at that point that was the begin like one of the beginnings of the movie is like maybe like beginning middle yeah and he, was... he he knew exactly what what time is happening how many steps to take and exactly when to grab the cash right and then he goes to the movie theater he's like oh i i thought you said it was a th like a just up probably he's like oh but this is one of my favorite movie. I've seen it hundreds of times. Right. Hundreds of times. <laughs> and he's not kidding. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 well it's so well done. It is uh, It's amazing how well even the writers and the directors and if you said it was based off a book, right? But like they never feel like they ran out of material, right? Like it never feels like like they were stretching for like okay, how do we fill in this gap in the middle? Like, we know where we want the movie to start. We know where we want it to end. We know we want it to repeat, but we don't really know how many times it repeats or what he does. He took the time to meet every person in that village, right, in that town. Mm -hmm. Like, not only did he spend all that time trying to convince the love of his life, right? Right? Not only mm -hmm. did he spend all the time getting to know her and proving his love to her and all that stuff, right? He also took that time with everybody else, clearly. Yeah. And he knew exactly what events were going to happen everywhere in order to like, he had to have stalked out every inch of the town to know what every person was going to get hurt. Right. He kid, he picked up that kid right when he was falling from the tree. He's like, you've never thanked me for this. Not once. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Not once. Uh, my favorite is when he get he got try he thinks the groundhog is what's causing it, and he steals the groundhog. <laughs> he just let the groundhog drive. You know what's what's brilliant about that is yeah. this movie is Groundhog Day, and there's no reason for anybody to ever make another movie about Groundhog Day, right? But there also is no reason to make a movie about Groundhog Day. Yeah, I like don't it's understand. it's kind of the dumbest holiday ever. It has no meaning. It has no significance. No, no. This is, Day is this is as perfect as a movie for yeah. Groundhog Day. Yeah, we got to pick more random holidays that have no reason to have a movie about them, but we got to make movies about them. Arbor Day. <laughs> Arbor Day, the movie. What happens yeah. in Arbor Day? They go back in time? No. No? They save a lot of trees. <laughs> anyway, Jeff. Guys, thanks yeah, anyway. for watch, watching along with us. You got more to say? This, this movie was impactful. I want. We need to talk about why this movie is impactful. Yes, we do. First off, it's impactful in a real life way that because of the movie, the town of Paxitani has seen much larger crowds. <laughs> so they've seen a ton more crowds. There are a lot of people more showed up just because of this movie. Um, Groundhog Day has entered just common usage as an unpleasant sit situation. Okay. Then I, I would say it's one of the biggest, one of the biggest like movies that you can reference in mod, like modern culture about a protagonist top, trapped in a time loop and how to correctly like pull it off. You know, it is how you can pull it off the time loop. It's the only time loop movie I know really well. Yeah, it's it's one of the earliest examples of a time loop. Wow. Um, there's it's earlier best. there's earlier examples. But I wouldn't consider this science fiction because it doesn't explain the time loop. It's just a uh, it's just a comedy fantasy. It is, is it a comedy? I mean, I laugh. There's moments where I laugh. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, there are very funny moments, but I. It's like a dark drama comedy. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a Bill Murray comedy. OK, that's a fair description. <laughs> Like Scrooge, it's a Bill Murray comedy. I'm gonna say the Groundhog Day actually like established like time loops and everything like this in modern culture. A lot of more films based it off and was inspired by Groundhog's Day. Yeah, I love this. Love this movie. Go watch it if you have not seen it. I know oh, we spoiled so much of it, but god dang it, people! It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Super they impactful. just pulled off so well. There's there's little to no critical, I guess, like I, like things I could say bad about it. I don't even have like you could start to criticize like the side characters. Like, are they good actors? And then I kind of think about it. I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody played their role perfectly. 
Oh, uh, especially the cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> I oh God, I love this movie. Go watch it. Yeah. It's an impactful Go. film. Of course, guys, thanks for watching and listening. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. It means so much to give us that subscribe button. You guys can subscribe today. You can make a new account and subscribe tomorrow and the next day because guess what? Time continues to move for us. Hit that like button if you guys like this movie. And if you're listening on iTunes, go to iTunes. Give us a five-star rating. Of course, you guys want to know what movies are coming up for this show and the other movies that Jeff and I are about to watch. They're over on the the Film Impact page on ForgetBeingCool.com. That's you know, forget being cool.com. Click on the film impact button. You guys can see all our movies. The posters are there. The dates for when the episodes are coming up. All that stuff is over there. Go do that. And Jeff and I will see you next week. Jeff. Yep. Dave. See you next week, buddy. Hey, I'll see you next week. A wop bop a loop bop a wop ba da dam. For more great discussions, hit that subscribe button or visit forgetbeingcool.com.